So I was appointed Crown Manager uh, two months ago um, after the Council rather spectacularly lost its accreditation as a building consenting authority. Uh, as you know, that hasn't affected the Council's actual legal ability to continue to um, issue consents and exercise those sorts of functions. Um, my appointment was actually um, unanimously uh, asked for by the City Council. So, uh, and the Council felt that it needed some assistance, some outside assistance, to lift the performance of the building control functions uh, within the Council. And that really is the basis on which I've been um, approaching the, the, the work. So I do have the powers to boss the Council around if that's necessary, but in actual fact um, we've established a really good working relationship both with councillors and also with, um, with management within, within the City Council. One of the first things I was asked to do in my reporting line is through to ministers was to prepare an action plan. Um, I'm sure a number of you might have already read that. It's on the website. It's quite a sort of short and direct and to the point sort of document. And what it does is uh, identify a whole series of uh, performance improvement initiatives across the full operation of the building control unit, uh, which will be necessary in order for it to regain accreditation. We're programmed to go back to our ends next year. I said right at the outset we would get a rush back. That's been part of the problem with the council in the past, band-aid solutions. So we're going to do it properly. We're going to embed some robust <coughs> systems and processes, have an organisational structure that is much more customer focused and, um, and um, uh, before we, we move back to IANS in the new year. One of the uh, first things we did, um, and it's contained within the, within the action plan, we thought we really need to get a much better handle on what lay ahead in terms of demand. So we, um, we've actually built a demand forecasting model which uses some of the really good information contained by CERA and by MB, uh, plus uh, the insurance companies and also um, quite a bit of business, business intelligence. And what that shows in one sense is, is daunting, but in another sense it creates real opportunities to, to drive some innovation. Um, I said to the planning committee a couple of weeks ago that we've had the entree but the main course is yet to arrive, and it's going to arrive with a vengeance, and it's mainly in the area of residential. Now, Warwick threw an interesting um, graph up on the board, which talked about the, um, I think it was building consents, uh, tracking up like that. Um, and by, by and large, a building construction cycle looks a bit like that on the upturn. Um, the sort of graph that uh, um, we produced actually shows a very steep rise in demand actually starting to kick in about now. Um, and it rises very steeply to the end of the year and then it plateaus out at that really high level for several years. So that creates a real challenge for us. Um, it's not the normal cyclical uh, pattern where you think, oh, God, the pressure's off for a while now and we can, uh, we can draw breath. It's actually going to be a sustained, very sustained growth in demand, driven mainly by residential construction. Commercial will be active as well, obviously. You've seen Warwick's presentation of the central city, and there'll be a lot of com commercial activity out uh, in other parts of the city as well, but it's really the residential stuff that's going to grow. Um, so what we're doing at the moment is we're having a good look at, well, what can we do to mitigate the effects of that growth in demand? And um, we're in the process of pulling together the, if you like, the suite of interventions that we can make, and then we're going to assess what impact they would have on the, on, the, on demand, and then we're going to come back to the sector and start to talk about to the sector about basically what they can do to help manage uh, you know common cause here, manage a common problem, but also um, um, what sort of service level could be realistically um, provided. Um, the whole you know I've been saying repeatedly that the whole purpose of the council really is to facilitate the rebuild, but facilitate it safely and have good uh, quality decision making. Um, but the, 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 the culture shift that I'm looking for is, is, is one of facilitating a rebuild following a major catastrophe rather than putting roadblocks in the way. So that's, a, that's the big culture shift that needs to occur within the city. In terms of the interventions, there's a couple of broad categories, I suppose. One is, is really around accessing some more bodies, okay, to help. And um, part of that will be recruitment. 
uh, to the council, and we'll be having quite an aggressive recruitment program, both domestically and internationally, over the next week to uh, month month or so. Um, we won't obviously try and recruit up to the up to the peak because that that wouldn't be responsible. But uh, so there's, there's there's a recruitment activity that will kick in uh, actually as early as next week. Um, but the other thing we're doing is actually quite aggressively outsourcing uh, a lot of the a lot of the work. And we've had around about 18 building consenting authorities put their hands up and indicate a willingness to help. Um, it certainly works with consenting because that's largely done off plans, as you all know, uh, and you can do that outside of Christchurch, as you all know. Um, and what we're looking at doing is um, outsourcing 150 to 200 consents per week. That's quite a big shift for the Christchurch city, which has tended to hold a lot of the work in to itself, but um, we just won't get there unless we actually do that. So that's the kind of the, that's the boring stuff in a way, that's the a, that's a thing we just kind of have to do. Uh, big, big challenges around inspections, because obviously by definition inspectors need to be on site. Uh, again, we'll, we'll be looking at seeing if we can access the resource nationally, uh, outside of Christchurch and possibly Auckland. Um, there's quite a bit of spare capacity, so we're just going to have to think of innovative ways of um, bringing uh, inspectors in from other parts of the country and perhaps put them on seven day a week rosters. So we're doing all that sort of stuff and that's all quite conventional sort of stuff. The other thing we're doing which is actually um, potentially much more innovative and which will require quite a culture shift not just within the council but also in the sector um, is you could call it streamlining systems and processes. You can call it a measured but definitive move towards risk-based consenting both in residential and commercial. And, um, and as I say, it will be measured and uh, a lot of this can be done within the existing legislation, although we are talking to government about the potential for some further uh, legislation through order and councils to actually facilitate that for Canterbury. Um, and it would be welcome for sure. But what it would require really is, is, um, is a focus on quality. So risk-based consenting means basically focusing on quality. And so what we'd be looking for from the sector are quality applications. And the reward uh, for quality applications will be an efficient processing of those. Equally, if we don't get quality applications, and one of the issues for Christchurch City is, to be a blunt, they let far too much through the door. That looks a bit shonky. Um, applicants that are basically thinking, right, we'll throw this in, and uh, the council will sort it out, because it's their statutory responsibility to sort it out. Well, that's not going to happen in the future. We're going to basically um, have much stronger gatekeeping within the council um, to basically intercept um, um, applications that are, are not up to scratch and to basically send them back and say, well, look, try again. And the penalty, of course, for that is, is delay. But uh, we, so you, you will notice some changes, um, uh, quite definitive changes start to manifest themselves. But, um, so, but equally, um, that's the negative, but equally there's a huge opportunity here, I think, for, for the Christchurch City to, and this is, an, this is ironic in a way, to actually lead the way in building consenting um, uh, activity um, uh, in New Zealand. And that, that, that's, that's the opportunity that excites me, actually. Um, so we'll be wanting to land a lot of these interventions um, and implement them this side of Christmas. We haven't got far to go, but uh, we're going to have to move pretty fast and move back to IANS for um, accreditation probably towards the middle of next year. But basically, um, uh, what I, the message I want to leave, because you're technical people here, we have common cause, basically to facilitate the rebuild of Christchurch. Uh, the City Council will be up for that and is quite happy to look at um, doing things differently and to embracing innovation. Um, um, and in fact, unless we do that, we won't get there. Um, so that's basically all I wanted to say, and, um, and I'm happy to take any questions. I've, I've got a team supporting me from MB and from Internal Affairs. Andrew Minton's here. In case you raise any technical questions, it'll stump me immediately. Um, I'll, pass it, I'll pass the buck over to Andrew, but uh, I'm happy to answer any questions now or later.